In today's video, I'm going to be telling you about the ping command and how you can use it for network testing and how you can use it for ethical hacking. Hi everyone, my name is Robert Meisen and I make videos on tech, networking and other IT related stuff. In this video, we're going to be discussing the ping command and how you can use it for network testing and how you can use it for ethical hacking. This video is going to be part of a really short series of basics on network testing and ethical hacking. In my personal and professional experience, network testing and ethical hacking go hand in hand. This is because if you are building a network, you should be testing it after you've built it. And if you're testing your network, you are in effect ethically hacking your own network. And if you want to get involved in ethical hacking, testing a network is pretty much the first step. This is where the ping command comes in. The ping command in its most basic fundamentals is basically sending a packet from your device. This could be your computer. It could be a laptop or a tablet to another network connected device. This can be anything with a network device inside of it, such as a computer with a network card. Anything that obtains an IP address has some kind of network interface. So a printer is also a network device, any kind of router, firewall or server. These devices can be on your local network and can also be on the internet. If you ping a device and you get a response back, then you know that you can reach this device. For network testing purposes, this works really great because it allows you to diagnose and troubleshoot problems. Before you start going around and digging for 100 cables and devices, you can use the ping command to actually see if you can reach the internet or not. If you can, then you know the problem is software related. For ethical hacking, on the other hand, pinging a device will allow you to know that it exists, which is a really important first step. Also, pinging a network and getting no response or finding that the ping commands themselves are being denied lets you know to the level of security that that network actually has. Typically, ping commands are not re refused for most networks. However, if they are, then you know that the security administrators on that network have done their homework. The ping command is really simple. You type in ping and the address you want to go to. This could be google.com or it could be the IP address associated with a certain web address. For example, google.com is also IP address 8.8.8.8.8. That is Google's DNS address. If you ping the IP address and you get a response, then you know it's working. If you ping google.com and you don't get a response, then there's a problem with the DNS servers in between you and it. So this is a really good way to use for troubleshooting any kind of network problems. And pretty much as a builder and any kind of car mechanic will have a wrench or a screwdriver to do their first things, the ping command almost is the most important first tool that any network technician will use. In my working life, I use the ping command almost daily to test any kind of problem because it allows me to rule out any kind of hardware problems that may exist within the network. If I can ping and reach the internet, then I know that it is not a hardware problem and it must be a software problem between my device and where I'm trying to go to. If you use macOS, I'm going to leave a video link up here where you can have a more in-depth tutorial about how to use the ping command on macOS. Likewise, if you use Linux, I'm also going to leave a link up here for again, a more in-depth video which will cover ping commands and their associated actions that you can add on top. In this video, we're basically just going to cover the basics of how ping works and what you can use it for for network testing and for ethical hacking. To put it simply, ping will send a packet to the place you want to go. And if the server responds, it will give you an echo response. From your device, you'll type in that request and you will send it to the server. The server receives the request and says, hey, I am actually here and sends your response back saying that I am here. Sending a ping request is really easy and typically it would have three responses in most cases. The first response is that you'll get an echo, an echo response from the device you're asking. This basically means that, hey, I am actually here and it tells you that it is. This response will typically contain the how long it took in milliseconds usually of the request and the response as well as how many packets were sent and how many packets were received. In Windows, for example, a typical send package is four and you'll receive four. In Linux, this will continue to send until you tell it to stop, but it all functions the same way. 
The second response that you can get from a server or a network device is that your request for pinging has timed out. Typically, this would mean that the server or network device you're connecting to isn't on and therefore unreachable, or the firewall that the device is connected to is refusing ping requests. The third and final most common response is you'll get a destination host unreachable. And what this basically means is that your device and the server you're trying to reach, that request doesn't know how to get there. It goes through some routers, it'll go through some switches, and it basically cannot find its way to the place you're trying to go. This typically means that you've got DNS issues or that there is just no route to these servers because of name resolving issues, DNS issues, and other routing issues that exist on not just your router, but other routers throughout the network. And this is a really good way to diagnose this problem as well. If you send out a ping request and you send out four ping requests and you get a response of all four, then you have 0% packet loss. Packet loss is the determination about how many packets you sent and how many were received. What you want in an ideal situation is zero packet loss. If you send out four requests and two of them are returned and two of them are lost, then you have 50% packet loss. Now, the odd thing about this type of situation is that you send out a request and you receive it, but sometimes you send out a request and you don't. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, that doesn't make a lot of sense, but the reason for this is typically resolved to hardware or if the network is congested. A hardware related issue could be that the cable is slightly faulty, but not completely unusable. And this means that it sends out the requests, it does receive them, but the cable may be faulty to a degree that only some of the requests come in. It could be a hardware issue also on the routers or switches you're connecting to. Another possibility for this kind of packet loss is also to do with network congestion. The fact is that all routers, firewalls, and network devices have processors and have a limited capacity to handle network traffic. If you're on a network with 200 people and you're using a really small router, expect that the network will either be slow or expect network connections to drop, or in this case, expect packet loss. And this is why routers and switches and so on start from the very low level for the homes and work their way up to enterprise levels for when you have thousands or tens of thousands of employees in single locations. If you do experience some kind of packet loss, checking the cables is probably the first step to try. You should also then check each step in between your network. For example, if you want to test whether or not you've got a problem in the hardware without actually looking at the physical hardware, you could start by pinging the next nearest network device. If your computer is connected to a switch and then that switch is connected to a router and then that router is connected to your modem, that's three different stages of a network that you could test. If you ping the switch and you get 100% packets returned, as in 0% packet loss, then you know you're fine. If you ping the router and you get 50% packets lost, then you know that the problem exists at that stage. So that way you can then check the router physically and you can also log into the router settings to check if there's any issues there and the cables in between. With regards to ethical hacking, the ping command is really useful because it allows you to establish or not whether the device actually exists. If you ping a certain IP address and you get no response from it, then the device either doesn't exist or is blocked. But if you ping a device and you get a response, then you know that that is available to have a look at further for ethical hacking purposes. But the ping command regarding to ethical hacking gives you the very most important step when it comes to diagnosing and ethical hacking and pen testing networks, which is, does the device exist? Because if you can see it, then so can other people. And this allows you to see whether or not if the device is exposed in such a way that you can start to use other commands to try to exploit any potential exploits in the system. This is why the ping command is the very first in these sets of videos. And it's one of the first things that I teach students when it comes to network security. Please do remember, I will post the Linux and Mac OS tutorials for the ping command up here. If this video was enough for you and you found out everything you needed to know about the ping command, then great, I did my job. If you do want to know more, please drop a comment down below and I will try to respond to them as soon as possible. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you do like it, please do press the like button. And if you do like the content from me, subscribe as well. And then you can get up to date with any new videos that I post. As always, this has been Robert Meisen, and I will see you in the next video.